it seems to be a decision that folks get hung up on and like lose sleep over. It's just, it's not that big of a deal. Folks, we have something fun to show you. Come on, let's take a look outside. We got it all set up out here. I'm pretty excited, pretty excited. We got them all ready to go. JDQA, SSQA, VersaForks, baby. What do you think? They go on the loader, they go on the three point. We're now carrying the JDQA in green, okay? And then the SSQA in black. But we started out, and for a long time, we carried all JDQA, like our stump buckets and, and uh, hitch hangers for the iMatch in black. And as soon as we run out of the black iMatch hitch hangers, that's what these are, hitch hangers. We make them for the iMatch as well. They'll be green too, but we'll be switching all over to green for JDQA products. We did some limited edition stuff and folks loved it. And then when they missed out, they kept asking, when are you gonna have more? And they're gonna hold off on buying. And well, that wasn't a problem I anticipated. And so, uh, so we solved that problem. Anyway, it costs a little bit more though, for us. I think we're listening for the same price, if I remember right, I can't remember. Somewhere, we're close to it. Not much more, JD, JD stuff, anything JD just costs a little bit more if it's green. But anyway. Let's tell you all about these and why it took so long to get the SSQA version of these forks released. We actually released the JDQA version first, then we came out with the SSQA version, and then we implemented a change that we did on the SSQA to the JDQA, so they can be similar, congruent, the same, that kind of thing. So anyway, they're just pallet forks, right? Except these are the only pallet forks that mount on the loader or the three-point hitch, okay? So if you have a JDQA, these will mount on the loader or the three-point. If you have an SSQA like Coyote, Kubota, Mahindra, TYM, LS, I'm missing, I'm drawing a blank. New Holland, Case, you get the idea. Pretty much everybody else has SSQA. Mount them on the front end loader or the three-point hitch. And of course, they are quick hitch compatible. You don't need this red hunk of steel. You don't need the quick hitch. You can just mount them right to your, right your uh, three-point arms, your Cat 1 three-point arms if you want to. But if you have a quick hitch, they are compatible. If you have an eye match, you're gonna need bushings on there just like you would with any other quick hitch item that needs bushings. But the Spico is special, it doesn't need bushings. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Cool, I found out today actually hooking up for the first time with my hydraulic top and tilt. Actually, let me let me back up just a little bit and tell you what these squared tubes are in the corners. All right, those are actually parking stands because some three points don't lower down far enough to be able to get like a quick hitch underneath the hooks, and so uh, we included parking stands so you just lower it down. find where the, there it is. So if you're gonna use it on your three point, you can put a parking stand down on either side and then it raises everything up so you can get your quick hitch underneath there. And you probably, this is probably overkill, but we figured we'd, we had the space so we'd make them this long just to make it easier. But what I found out with the hydraulic top link on there is that I didn't even need that. When I had uh, my guys drop off these forks, they didn't have the parking stands down. I was like, well, hold on, Chris, record this, and let's see if I can back into it and lengthen out that top link, because it'll lower it down, and I was able to get underneath there and then slowly feather it back as I drove back, kind of going like this, and got it all squared up and hooked up. Didn't even need the parking stands. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, so let's tell you more about these pallet forks because yeah, they're more than just pallet forks. Again, they go on the loader and the three-point. They also have a built-in two-inch receiver right down there in the middle, all right? So you can hook up trailer to it, you know, haul things around, all that kind of stuff. Take your, uh, your fork tines off, of course. So fork tines, they come off. Get that one out of the way, show you right here. We've shown you before, but see that slot there in the middle, how it kind of opens up? Just like that, okay? Let me get that from beneath here. Go ahead. 
So you, well, here, just back up. You, can you see the top? Oh. Yeah. I just took the whole thing off. So you put the top hook on, right in the bottom, then you slide over to the left or to the right. Bada bing, bada boom. That kind of stuff. Then you're good to go. And that's the, the same connection whether it's JDQA or SSQA. Yeah, that doesn't that part doesn't matter. That's just for forks. And if you want to get just the frame, say you already have pallet forks, these are just your class two 16 inch top to bottom rail. 16 and an eighth or something like that. It's if you're around 16 inches, they're gonna work because they're just they're like 14 or 13 inches, 16 inches, and like 18 inches. So if you're at the 16 inch nominal increment, then your tines will work and you can just buy the frame by itself if you don't want to get the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, up on top, we have a spot where you can put a ball for a gooseneck mover if you want that. If you don't run it with a quick hitch, there's not enough space, but if you don't run it with a quick hitch, you can hang suitcase weights on here for additional ballast weight on the front or the back. Of course, if it's on the front, there's no quick hitch there, so you can hang those on there too. Uh, get some more counterweight when you need it. And then chain hooks down here. I don't know if I mentioned those, but we have chain hooks. Drag things along, all that kind of stuff as well. Now we've talked about making an optional headache rack, maybe a bolt on one. Thought about maybe putting some slots in here and just giving you the ability to put like two by fours, like a two by four down here and on the other side just to have a little backstop. That'd be a cheap way to do it. We'll probably do that at some point, just haven't done anything about it yet. 2,000 pound rated forks, okay? So 2,000 pound rating is at a 24 inch load center, all right? So the 2,000 pounds is not out at the end, okay? And it's not here, it's basically if your load center was, if you go out two foot, this is where your, your load rating is. That's just how pallet forks are rated. There's nothing unique to ours. These are kind of like a standard duty. We tried to keep some of the weight down without that headache rack so that, you know, the smaller tractors, the one, the two series, the BX, the B series, the LX, all that kind of stuff um, isn't affected as much. And so these are around 250 pounds, the exact weights on our website. It's a little bit different between the JDQA and the SSQA, but right around there, which is manageable. It is about 50 pounds more than our ultralight forks from HLA, but it's a one size fits all. We don't have to carry multiple, um, series of these forks right now or the fork frames and it, and it works so basically the one through the four series it'll work for you whether it's a john deere kubota coyote all those other brands that we talked about earlier am i wrong aren't those ultra light forks 900 pound rated oh yeah that's a good point chris the ultra light forks are only rated not to 900 pounds at a 21 inch load center and so um, that is they're, they're using smaller tines obviously a lighter frame all that kind of stuff too so that is part of the way that they're getting to that lower weight as well. Um, so what do you use pallet forks for? Well, obviously moving things around on pallets, right? But if you use them, you see all those logs? Zoom in on those logs. See all those logs? I moved all of those logs there with pallet forks, that whole stack of them. Now I have moved them around with grapples too, but I moved them from over there to over there with just a set of pallet forks. Okay, so you can use them for moving stuff like that around. See that brush hog sitting there? I'm gonna pick that up, I'm gonna move that with a set of pallet forks, move it right out of the way. That's how it got sat there, was with a set of pallet forks. I wish it would've got sat somewhere different, but I'm gonna move it around. Um, what else? Well, I mean, pretty much anything that I put on my racking inside my barn, let's open up, let's go inside the barn and we'll just show them. It's a mess. Don't make fun of me, my barn's a mess. What else is new? What? I didn't say anything. I swear you said something. Hard of hearing. But see the racking? You put stuff on shelves. I, these Christmas decorations that I still haven't moved other things out of the way to put them on racking, I'm, I'm gonna put these over there, okay? Just moving things from the house here. That table thing, coffee table thing, it's for sale. It's on Facebook, you can buy it there if you want. That's, that's my point though. You can use pallet forks for all sorts of things. Okay, Chris, what am I missing? What else can you use pallet forks for? Um, a long time ago, I pulled footage from our YouTube friend, Tractor Mike. He was carrying an entire brush pile. Yeah, brush pile. Forks. Yeah. Because we call them occasionally a poor man's grapple. We made a video all about that. Yeah. Comparing a grapple to pallet forks, what can you get by with, you know? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these off on the John Deere and show you what these brackets are because this is the design change that we uh, implemented. Or maybe I'll do it. It doesn't matter. They both have it now. 
No, I'll do it on the, um, I'll do it here. This is fine. We do a lot of planning for these videos, people. A lot of planning. So that's unhooked. It was raining. I need a rag to dry off the seat. Okay. So the part that we, the reason the SSQA took so long to come out was this is a tough spot to try to fit uh, a bracket. Some kind to make it work with everything and not interfere with like the skid steer quick attach plates and anything else. So we came up with this swing bracket here that kind of pins down. So it'll pin down here when you want to use it as a three point mount. Okay, so you flip the other bracket down as well. And then when you want to use, actually on the John Deere quick attach, you can leave it like this all the time if you want to, because the brackets are over here and don't interfere. The skid steer plate's kind of wider. So if you want to move it to the uh, the other position there, out of the way, kind of line that up, go like so. And then, you know, the skid steer version has nothing interfering of this quick attach plate right here at all. So um, we did learn during the development process that we had to beef this up a little bit more, make that a little bit sturdier there. Uh, also, the other benefit on the bottom too is that we have this kind of clevis style, two pieces of steel holding this, the lower brackets in place. So that gives it more strength there too. So, and that's something with any of our products, you know, whether it's the stump wreckers, hitch hangers, forks, anything else we come out with too, versa brackets, all that stuff, we're always trying to improve. And so what you see in a video at, at some point, there could be design tweaks that are put in place along the way. And, you know, we have general disclaimers that say, you know, these are representative, but there could be improvements that are made. And that's true. We want to always make our products better and um, more versatile in any way that we can. And so that's what we're always looking to do, not sitting on our laurels, so to speak. So really, you know, a lot of folks ask, hey, I just got a tractor. What do I need for it? And most of the time it's project specific, right? You don't just tell everybody, hey, you need a brush hog. What if they don't have anything to mow like that, right? Or a tiller, if they're not tilling, or a snow blower, because they don't have any snow, right? That's few and far between where you can say, you know, pretty much every tractor owner can use this. But pallet forks are something you can normally find a way to use. They're very handy to have. I mean, lots of times I'll have a set of forks on my tractor more than I will a grapple or a bucket. Uh, so super handy. And we ship these UPS ground. We used to ship forks freight, which was more expensive and more of a pain for a customer. I mean, it's not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, but it's way more convenient to ship them UPS ground. We ship the tines separately, we wrap them and ship them, and then the frames we put in a box and ship those out too. So everything, is, you don't have to be home for a delivery for pallet forks, for our Versa forks. You like that name, Versa forks? I do. But that's a really good bonus too. So whether it's the SSQA or the JDQA, UPS ground right to you. Go to goodworkstractors.com. That's where you'll find more information. The different tine length variations. Okay. I should probably tell you about tine length variations. 36, 42, 48. At some point, I'm going to drop one of those sizes. Maybe the 42s. I don't know. Or maybe I'll only carry 42s. I don't know. It seems to be a decision that folks get hung up on and like lose sleep over. It's just, it's not that big of a deal, really. So, I mean, 36 inch is great for small tractors that don't have a lot of lift capacity you're not gonna really see a benefit from 48 because unless you're only doing brush, right? But 48 is longer. You're not gonna lift anything much weight at all, 48 inches out. So just get the 36s or the 42s. I mean, it's a small price difference, like 50 bucks or something. It's a small weight difference, like 10 or 15 pounds. Those are both insignificant, in my opinion. Really insignificant, okay? Um, and then for a bigger tractor, like a, like a CK series, a Kubota LX, a John Deere 2032-2038, honestly, anything that size and bigger, you can go with 48. If you have a, maybe a space restriction where you're storing it inside a garage, a barn, or even on a trailer, and that six inch difference or 12 inch difference is gonna matter there, maybe that's a consideration. That's pretty unique, right? So everybody's got unique circumstances, but in the grand scheme of things, as far as the utility of them goes, Anything this size or bigger, just go with the 48s. Anything that's a subcompact, 
just go to 36 or 42 and don't lose sleep over it. Just, just pick one and run with it. So it's not, it, it's not gonna be in the world either way. You'll hear folks that, that say it is. There'll be folks that comment and say it is and whatever. I mean, everybody's got their opinion. So anyway, on that note, goodworkstractors.com. You can place your order on there. Anything you see too. I mean, all this stuff that's back here, these are all things that I demo. Isn't that cool? That's a lot of fun. To demo all this stuff, show you guys what it's all about. We've done videos on just about every attachment that you see out there. You can go to our website, place your order, and we ship it to you. Pretty cool. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.